Hey everybody, it's Brooke with the Buttered Home. Sorry, I'm laughing at Reagan. She's, come in here, you can do it in here. <laughs> she asked if she could do this. Action. <laughs> so action, it's the last Monday of March and we are here with you live from the Buttered Home for Messy Kitchen Monday. We thank you for joining us as always. If you're new, be sure if you're on Facebook and drop where you're watching from in the comments and you can do it too on Instagram. We might just not be able to reply to you. So if you have any questions while we're cooking on Instagram, you are welcome to ask them here or send them in a direct message and we'll get back to you after we're done. Facebook, you can drop your questions here and if we have time, we'll get to them as we put things together. <clears throat> if not, we'll get back with you very shortly as to when we get through. Hopefully we have a lot of new people watching with us tonight. We've picked up some new viewers this week and for that we are very thankful. Now, if you have been with us, then you already know that we have had a fantastic time this month learning how to trick our family into eating healthier. So, now anybody can say that we're just doing some healthy recipes, but I look at it like this, that it's one more opportunity as a parent <laughs> to get one over on your kids and you can do that with cooking too. I know my mama did it for years with uh, deer meat for me and my brother. <laughs> so I'm just carrying on a family tradition. So tonight we are going to combine what we did back in February by using the crock pot <clears throat> with this month's theme of actually, stop. <laughs> This month's theme of actually cooking a little bit healthier. And tonight is one of my favorites, white chicken chili. Now, the great thing about this recipe is, is you can do it one of two ways. And the recipe does tell you how to do either. It tells you how to do it in your crock pot, or if you have time, which a lot of people do these days, it also gives you stovetop directions. Directions, I can't even talk. Do we have a question? No. Oh, okay. I, I got a fist bump and I thought it was a question. Directions. So, yeah. <laughs> so the directions are for both. So we're real happy about that because uh, anytime that we can give you alternate ways to do things, whether it's on purpose or accident like last week, um, we certainly want to be able to do that. So it's really easy uh, and it's really, really good. Um, it's never too hot outside for comfort food. And this is comfort food through and through. And I'm probably about to have to get the fly swatter after Reagan. Just go ahead and tell that because she's throwing things at Tanner because she's, she's four. She is not, did you throw something at me? She <laughs> did. No, I, I saw it whiz <laughs> behind the camera. Anyway, back on track. Reagan is about to get banned from the messy kitchen here live with you all tonight. The last thing I told her was, don't distract me. And she's leaving. So, bye, bye Reagan. We love you, Reagan. Bye. <laughs> uh, we'll give her a little grace. God love her. She's not even going to get to finish her senior year out at school. So, we'll be, we'll be sweet to her later. Just not right now. <laughs> But we start out with about two pounds of chicken raw in the bottom of our crock pot. And there's no difference on how you do this on the stove. You'll put this in a big soup pot too on the stove. And to that, you kind of just throw everything in. So I have a can of uh, white beans or cannellini beans. And then I have a can of pinto beans that I've drained and rinsed, and they're gonna go in right on top of the chicken. And if you hear whistling, that's Big D. He's keeping up with the dogs. Him and Jared are dog sitting. Let me get this out of the way and clean up my mess. Cause I was smart and drained them and rinsed them and then put them on some paper towels on the counter and they've been sitting here long enough that they just went right through the paper towels. All right, and I'm also gonna get a spoon. Hey, have you ever known me to be completely prepared? It's always better, I think, whenever I'm not. So we're just gonna spread the beans out 
here. And then to this, and this is one of the things that I love about this recipe. Just like the uh, cowboy beans that we did in the crock pot last month, you don't have to have a lot of fancy things to cook something really good. So if you're not a cook that might have onions and celery and minced garlic hanging around in your refrigerator, then this, this recipe is good for good dry spices. So we're going to add some garlic powder and I'm just going to sprinkle that right over the top and then we are going to add some onion powder same thing right over the top and then we're going to add a good healthy helping of salt because these beans are a lot like potatoes. They'll soak up a lot of the salt. So this actually calls for about two teaspoons full of salt. And don't worry about the uh, measurements because when this recipe drops later in the week, you will actually get all the measurements on the recipe card. And we're gonna do the same thing with our fresh ground pepper. And also, if you are salt sensitive, you can modify the recipe. Now, I'm just going to take my spoon and just kind of mix that up just a little bit. Now, the reason why I add this, the spices in the center is because I like to kind of layer it. So, to the next layer, I'm going to add about a cup of frozen corn. And that just goes right over the top. And then the thing that gives it all of the good kick and flavor is a 16 ounce jar of mild salsa verde. And I love this because this actually takes the place of your fresh produce and I'm gonna have trouble opening it on live Facebook right here. <laughs> I got it though. So we're gonna take this whole 16 ounce jar and pour that over the top. And this gives it that pretty green tint uh, and the corn is really a nice yellow pop of color and I'm just going to mix that up and make sure it kind of gets all incorporated. Oh, got to move it over. Thank you, Tanner. And then we have a whole bunch of chicken broth. So that's going to go right in over the top as well. And then you are going to let this go in the crock pot on low for eight hours. When that eight hours is up, oh, sorry, that made a loud noise. No, I, I accidentally kicked Oh, did you bump the camera? <laughs> My bad, guys. We're live, and you always know it's wonderful and live whenever we have mishaps like that. So, welcome to live Facebook TV land. So, we're gonna just um, put this in the crock pot on low for eight hours. When, it's, when your eight hours is up, you're gonna take your chicken out and just shred it with two forks and then put it back in. And I always like to set it to low or high for 15 or 30 minutes just to let that chicken heat back through and soak up all those good flavors. And there you have it. That is your white chicken chili. You're not gonna believe this, but that comes in under th around 300 calories per serving. It's fantastic. It's delicious and it's good, easy comfort food at its finest. Now, you can do everything that we just did in a soup pot on top of the stove and you would just set your, you bring it to a bowl and let it get hot and boil for a minute and then you would cover it slightly, just offset, and then you would turn it down to a simmer and let it simmer for about 25 to 30 minutes until your chicken was cooked all the way through. Do the same thing, take your chicken out, uh, turn it on low, shred your chicken and put it back in and just heat it through. Now this is wonderful with fresh avocado and it's wonderful with sour cream, all those fixings. Uh, now all the fixings are not included in that calorie count either so <laughs> that's just full disclosure on that so this is white chicken chili and I think that it is a perfect way to finish off our month of tricking our folks into eating healthier because we are all about some southern comfort food here at the buttered home 
and this recipe is certainly an icon of that. It, it has a wonderful host of flavors. It's easy. It's a good full meal for a weeknight and it won't break the bank and it won't fill you up on calories either. Just wholesome goodness. So we love that here at the Buttered Home and we hope you do too. Next month, can anybody guess what we might be doing in April? Which I'm not gonna wait too long for your answers because we don't like to keep y'all more than about 20 minutes or so. Next month, we are going to do a complete 180 and do some not so healthy stuff, <laughs> but some really good stuff. Next month is all about the Southern staple, the casserole. So we hope you'll join us because we've got some really good casseroles, not your old traditional kind of stuff that you are going to love that are also easy meals that you can prep on the weekend, pop them in the fridge or freeze them and have them for later in the week. So we love meal prep too and casserole is a great way to do meal prep ahead of time. So I guess I'll see you guys in April. I hope everybody is staying well and safe and at home if you can. Um, we hope that uh, you all are taking care of one another, check in on your people um, because this is a difficult time and, and an unprecedented time where we have never been through anything like this. I mean, I'm, I'm about to be 47 years old and have never experienced anything like this before. So it's new to everybody when we're trying to help um, our little senior get through it all. You know, I don't sometimes know what to tell her because I've never done this before. And I know that there are a lot of people in the same boat as, as we all are. So let's pray for one another, check on one another, love on one another, and by all means, go to thebutteredhome.com and find you something good to cook. So we will see y'all next week in April. Hopefully things will be a lot sunnier, a lot better, and we can share some wonderful recipes for you for casseroles for upcoming to Easter. From the buttered home to your home, we love y'all.